The word today is tomorrow. The word I have for you today is tomorrow because we ask ourselves, what can we say about tomorrow except it's the day after today. It's a simple word, but it carries a lot of meaning and basic, basically all our messages, and I hear Brother Thomas say this on occasion, He's, all our messages, messages, messages sometimes are kind of intertwined. There was even a time that Pastor Sandy started off a message and we just, it was like a snowball effect. It kind of rolled down here and it gathered up a bigger snowball and, and uh, there was a continuation of one and then two and then three. And it just got better and better. But it all depends on how the Holy Spirit ministers to our hearts and how he intertwines our messages and make them connected, even though they're similar, they're different, because it may have a message for someone on the next Sunday that may not have gotten it the Sunday before. So Minister Ann mentioned in her message, she asked, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Minister Buddy asked, what's your position? And I asked, is today more important than tomorrow? And the answer is yes. What can we do today that you cannot do tomorrow? Let me give you a couple of examples of how in the Word how today has so much significance over tomorrow. If you want to turn to your, your Bibles to James 14 and 13, and he gives us a, a good understanding of what tomorrow and today means. It says, it reads, come on now you who say, tomorrow we will go into we will go in su into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For well, you are a, you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance, all such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing will do to do and fails to do it for him, it is sin. Understand that today is the day that we can work on right now. We're not promised tomorrow. So in today's day, right now, today, we have a task. We have a job that we all have to do. And doing the things for today we're not concerned about the Lord. When we walk in the present day, right now, in the right now, it doesn't even concern tomorrow. But everything is based upon basically tomorrow. We don't look at it like that, but it really is. A lot of things are based on the tomorrow. Most of us live in the future, or we live for the next day. Our plans, our trips, our vacations, we plan for the up, up and coming. Or we plan for what we're going to do in October. On the train. In New Orleans. What we're going to do when our paycheck comes. You haven't gotten it yet, but you're planning for your paycheck. Or you're planning what you're going to do with the finances on your paycheck. What bills you're going to pay. When in essence, it tells us not to worry about tomorrow. Right. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Our most important time is what we're doing right now. Our most important time is the 24 hours that we're in right now. Our present day factor is our most important time. Yes. One of the reasons that our present day factor is the most important is because today we get to do something 
that will actually dictate someone's future. It will actually carry on an individual to eternal, to the eternal Amen. chapter in his life. So today we get a chance to tell somebody about someone that can save anyone. We can, we can tell someone about a Jesus, about a God and his son that gave us something that today can only fulfill. Amen. We get to go out and explain today to someone about how they can live eternal life. So the message that Mr. Ann and Mr. Buddy had, both of them were intertwined in how much do you love me? Feed my sheep. How do we feed our sheep? How do we feed those lambs? Yes. We feed them by giving them a message. That message is the message of Christ. Yes. How do we love someone? How do we, he asked, he said, Mr. Ann said, do you love me? Well, if you love him, don't you want to tell somebody about him? Amen. If that's the case, then today is the best day to tell the individual. Right. We don't have to wait until tomorrow. Amen. When we read the, the book of Matthew, starting in uh, the 6th chapter, the 25th verse, it reads about tomorrow and today. The chapter reads like this. In Matthew 25 and 34 it says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather at the barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his lifespan? A single hour to his lifespan. And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. So we shouldn't be anxious for the next day to come when we have today to take care of things. And not only that, today to understand that God will take care of you. We're more important than the birds of the air. We're more important than, and they get, they get their clothes, they get food, they get everything they need. Their necessities are met. In the same way God will meet our needs. He meets our needs on a daily basis. When I say daily basis, daily is today. Daily is right now. It's not tomorrow. We look for tomorrow. We plan for tomorrow. We plan for months in advance. But today is the main day. It's a, it says that the word says that today is the day of salvation. Right. Who can you give that message to that will benefits on them. Who can you give a message of salvation to to let them know that today may be their last day? I know of uh, an individual that will say he lived constantly in the future. He lived his life in a way that tomorrow and the future was all he could see. He couldn't see today because he was planning so far ahead for tomorrow that today didn't really matter to him. Even though day to day to day, that individual looked at it as if tomorrow was the only thing that was worth living for. This was like the rich man <laughs> that, that was preparing for something in the future and never looked at today. He didn't think about what could transpire in the day. He looked at the future. For those who don't understand or have ever heard of the parable of the rich food, 
Let me give you a synopsis of how he lived his life. This certain rich man, he yielded an abundance of an abundant harvest. So he made a lot. He had a lot going for him. He grew a lot. He he actually was believing that everything he had was about right now. It was about the right now. But it was about building for the future, for tomorrow. So he thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. Amen. <laughs> so he was living for what was going to happen. He was getting set, building the barns, going to build the storehouses, going to get set up. Set up for the future. And I'm as guilty as the man with the grain. Because at the present time, I look for the retirement aspect of living life and being married. But I have a job to do also. Before this time takes place, before this retirement, I walk into this retirement, there is something that I'll be called to do. I'm called to do this like we are all called to do this daily. Today, we have to leave this church, this body, walk outside these doors, and tell somebody today Amen. about Jesus. Amen. That's our task. That's our job. Our job is to spread the gospel. With no other job God gave us, Jesus gave us, who loved us so much, was to go out and spread this gospel. This good news. Gospel is good news. So when you give to somebody, it's not just straight out hell and brimstone message. It's a message about the gospel. The message about salvation. The message about living beyond the fleshly body that we live in. It's about today. So the, big, the rich man says, I'm going to take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich for God. Wow. That's today. You are rich for God today. You only promise today. You can step outside this building anything. We live in a world today to where as we sit in our church body, somebody could be inside that church body and just devastate the church. Like they did in South Carolina. We live in a world today to where things happen in an instant. That day is not promised to any of us. But we're given enough time to tell somebody about Jesus. Yes. With the parable of the rich fool, I think we all, to a certain extent, live in that. I say we live in that in that arena to a certain extent. All of us have prepared for tomorrow, prepared for months away, set up trips for six to eight months down the road. Prepare yourselves for bills that are not due yet. Get your check ready for. To write this out and write that out. Plan for all types of occasions for your family and yourself. We all live in that in that future tense. We have to ask ourselves truly, what is tomorrow? How much will tomorrow mean to us? if we don't take care of today. Today is actually the day of salvation. Amen. There are so many people that don't know what we know. That's right. There's so many people that want to know, but may not ask. There may be an individual that you work with that 
is living daily in the future tense. Some people even live in the past, but they don't live in the day. Our job is to go out and tell those people today about how they can receive salvation through Jesus Christ. You ask yourself, how many people in my neighborhood are not saved? Have not repented or received salvation? Understand that in the cycle of what we do, repentance is a part of that. So we ask, what is your position? Do you love him? will feed his lambs. Tell him about the love that he has for us, for each of every yes. one of us. Yes. Yes. He died for us and our sins. Yes. Yes. He intends more so than anything else to see us again in his glory. Amen. Let's not wait till tomorrow. Let's do what God told us was our assignment. Amen. The easy part of this assignment is that all we have to do is open our mouths and be bold enough to confess to another individual about Jesus Christ. Yes. That's not a hard task. Yes. Actually, a very easy task. Jesus said here I stand, won't you please let me in, and you say I will, tomorrow, Jesus said I am he who supplies all your needs. And you said, I know, but tomorrow, who tomorrow, I'll give my life. Tomorrow, I thought about today, but it's so much easier to say. Tomorrow, who promise you tomorrow, you better choose the Lord today. Because tomorrow very well might be too late. 